Hey everyone, it's Adam here from Ads Productions and in this video I'm going to go through an overview of CES 2014. Now if you don't know what CES 2014 is, basically it's the Consumer Electronics Show where companies from around the world show off their gadgets, their gizmos, whatever they have to the consumer for the potential release in the upcoming year. So let's get going with the first thing I'd like to highlight of CES 2014. That's LG's and Samsung's curved displays. Samsung came out and announced a 105 inch curved 4K display. When they were announcing this, Michael Bay was gonna come out because you know he made Transformers and things like that. And he was gonna go give this big speech about this new display. But unfortunately, this happened. And um, what I try to do is I, as a director, I try to, <sighs> ah, the type is all off, sorry, but I'll just wing this. Tell us what you think. Yeah, we'll just, we'll, we'll wing it right now. Um, I, take I try to take people on an emotional ride, and um, the curve. How does it? Uh, how do you think it's going to impact uh, how viewers experience your movies? Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let's thank Michael Bay for joining us. At CES, there's everything, even toothbrushes that are hooked up to mobile devices to give statistics on how well you're cleaning your teeth. And one of my highlights of CES is the Oculus Rift's new development coming out. So this is the second edition, if you like, of the Oculus Rift. And the big difference between the first and second was that it's got the, it, it comes with a camera that you put on top of your monitor or in front of your face, and that gives for head tracking. So meaning when you're in the Oculus, you can actually lean forward, lean around and look. Before, you weren't able to do that people were saying amazing things about the first Oculus. Now the second one's out, they're saying even better things. Oculus and their Rift is definitely something you should be watching for in the near future, because it's gonna redefine virtual reality for everyone. Sony came out and announced their PlayStation Now. This is to integrate all of their games with every device they have. So for example, you'd be able to play games on your PS4, you'd be able to play it on your tablet, and you'll be able to sit on the toilet and play it with your Vita if you want. Whatever you wanna do, you probably can do it with the PlayStation Now. They did say it's it's coming to selected games. So that doesn't necessarily mean the latest PlayStation 4 games will be available on the PS Vita. It doesn't mean that, but that's that's the direction they want to go. They want to be able to make it so that once you buy a game, that's it. Then you, you can put it on every device and you can take it with you on the bus, the train, or whatever. You get back home, go on your TV, on your PlayStation 4, and carry on playing. That's what they're aiming for. Not necessarily supported with every game, but that's the steps they're trying to make. So really really good developments out of the Sony area for that one. Now if console gaming isn't your thing, check what Razer is going to bring out. Yep, what you saw there was a modular PC. And now I know what you're saying, every PC is modular, you can take out a power supply, you can take out the RAM, you can swap it in and out. But come on, doesn't that look totally badass? Valve came out and announced that there are many, many different companies supporting their Steam box. This is basically a machine that runs the Steam operating system because they're looking to get the uh, PC gamers out of their bedrooms into the living rooms, if you like. So here are all the third party and in fact Valve Steam machine every single machine that will support Steam OS and is a pre-built package. So let's go and kick it off with Valve's Steam machine. We then have CyberPower PC. We then have Digital Storm Bolt 2. We then have the Alienware Steam machine. Next up is Falcon Northwest Tiki. Then iBuyPower then Zotac, then Gigabyte Bricks Pro, then Material.net, then Origin PC Cronus, then Webhalen, then Scans NC10, 
and finally the next spa. So there are all of the announced supported steam boxes that are going to be on sale for various prices. I've chosen to include the name along with the image in this video just so you can go ahead and look it up if you're interested in that sort of thing. Audi has come out and announced a new sports car that boasts laser powered headlights. It's a hybrid of electricity and a petrol car or a gasoline car depending on what part of the world you're from. We also have the Nvidia Tegra K1 processor. And this is a very very powerful processor that comes with 192 cores that leverages Nvidia's experience with supercomputing. So basically what it's trying to do is it has the potential to bring console level games with stunningly realistic graphics just to mobile devices basically. There are 32-bit versions and 64-bit versions on its way and the rumour has it that they're set to outperform Apple's chips. However, as we know with Apple, they tend to release iPhones over and over and over again. So I'm sure the latest iPhone is going to come out and blast NVIDIA's one out of the water. So anyway, that's NVIDIA's K1 processor for its mobile platform. 192 cores set to compete in the mobile market with Apple unless Apple come out with a better one when their new iPhone releases. 4K is all the rage at CES from TVs to curved displays. But people are trying to go, wait a minute, it's going to cost me thousands and thousands to record 4K. Well, Sony is trying to come out with the answer for that one with the Sony FDR AX100 Handycam 4K camcorder. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to pretend I know a whole lot about camcorders, but this is rumoured to be the first consumer level uh, 4K camera. Yes, it's not going to be cheap. It's going to be like $2,000 or something like that. But it's the first step in allowing 4K to become a consumer level rather than professional. So again, if you want to go ahead and look up yourself the Sony uh, camcorder that I'm talking about is the Sony FDR AX100 Handycam 4K camcorder. 3D printing has made a scene at CES with the MakerBot Z18 Industrial 3D printer. More and more nowadays 3D printing is becoming at the consumer level rather than the professional so it's going to be really really exciting when you have people on one side of the world creating a design and needing it to get to a certain place of the world in a matter of seconds. They can literally send the blueprint across to the compatible printer in the other side of the world, print out their design instead of having to ship it. Just imagine the creative possibilities with that. It's just absolutely phenomenal. So again, that's the MakerBot Z18 Industrial 3D printer. T-Mobile have, T have come out and said that they will pay the termination fees for anyone who jumps from another carrier to their network. Those of you that are on T-Mobile, this is big, big news for you because this is showing that companies want to try and compete they want to give you better deals they want to give you better phones so if you're on T-Mobile listen up they will pay the early termination fees for anyone that jumps from another carrier feel free to look that one up and let me know what you think in the comments below oh and one more thing if you ever wanted to turn your iPhone into a stun gun this might be the case for you on switch and then you've got the blue trigger and that's about 650,000 volts. It's 0 0.08 milliamps. It's non-lethal, but it's really meant to protect yourself and kind of defer any kind of intruders that are trying to steal your phone. Thanks very much for watching. This has been Adam from Ash Productions with an overview of CES 2014. It's been my highlights of what I think is important to tell you about. If you think I've missed anything or just want to talk about something I mentioned in the video, feel free to leave it in the comments below. I'll reply to most, if not all, of my comments. And I'll see you guys in the next video.